today, the August inflation report sheds more light on the dire Biden economy. Biden claims we'll have a vaccine for cancer and Democrats follow Governor Abbott's lead by busing illegal immigrants out of their cities. We've got all of that and more coming up and it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez and I am joined today by Blaze TV contributors Yaku Buyans, who is also host of The Bottom Line, which you should be subscribed to on YouTube and everywhere else. Uh, also, John Doyle, as I mentioned, fellow Blaze TV contributor. You can also find him at uh, Heck Off Commie, which is another, I'm told, YouTube it's every channel. It's every week. I'll break the cycle. <laughs> Um, well, he does have a lot going on, as he mentioned to me off air. Um, and I don't know. We, You guys, sometimes I, f I wish that the audience could hear these off air conversations that we have mm -hmm. and just how ridiculous it is because it's, we're just friends here talking about leopard geckos and snakes. Are you calling the business idea that I told you about ridiculous? Yes. No, she's talking about me saying I kill every snake I see. <laughs> no, I hate like, snakes. Yaku's I like, I hunt snakes. I do And then I snakes. set them on fire. I do set them on fire. I'm from Africa. Those <laughs> things are poison. You kill them. Genesis 3, baby. I crush I that thing's head. I can't get over it. All right. Sorry, I guess Stephen. We'll, I guess we'll get to the actual news of the day. Um, so the consumer price index rose 8.3%, per, just 8.3% between August 2021 and then August 2022. This is according to um, today's report by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, this is a decline from the 8.5 year-over-year rate seen in July and the 9.1 year-over-year rate seen in June as gas prices continue to fall. However... Month-to-month -month prices, month-over-month -month prices for food, shelter, and medical services increased 0.1% since July. And uh, economy, uh, 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 people who studied the economy had expected headline inflation to fall 0.1%. Uh, last month, multiple White House officials spun the July inflation report by noting that inflation was, of course, you know, they're like, no, it's, I, it's 0%. It's not this. There's no inflation. It's just look, it's just zero percent. Um, but they failed to mention all of the rising prices for food and virtually every other commodity that there is. Um, it's, it's hard to believe in this day and age we're seeing we're feeling the effects of all of this. And you still have an administration who is like, no, don't believe your eyes. Don't believe your ears. Believe what we are here to tell you. Everything is fine. There's mm -hmm. nothing to see here. Sunday, I spoke in Chicago Sunday at a big rally to try and get Pritzker out of office. And the guy that spoke in front of me is a good friend, Steve Moore. He was the chief economic advisor to Reagan. Mm -hmm. He was an econo economic advisor to Trump. And Steve said, Yaku, um, it's closer to 20. If you really factor in, 20% uh, mm -hmm. inflation is mm -hmm. really the real number where we are, honestly. And then if you look at you know, Cardone and all the real estate moguls currently saying the housing market's going to crash. It's going to come down at least 28 percent. It normally runs, you know, parallel with inflation. So I, for me, we're at the 20 percent level of inflation. I mean, it, it just certainly yeah. feels that way. Yeah. Well, you just got to go by certain factors. And, and Steve, I trust Steve. I mean, but but honestly, the nine they want to admit to the Dow's falling. I mean, no, it's it's look, it's coming. Uh, there's a there's a a recorrection in the market has to come. The mm -hmm. housing market particularly is always a good indicator, 2008. Uh, Kyle Bass, a friend, the guy that shorted the movie The Big Short 08 market, Kyle's saying, I'm shorting it again. Mm. So when you look at those guys who have had success, I mean, Kyle Bass made billions mm -hmm. on shorting the market in 08, and he's saying, I'm gonna short it again, it's coming again, and we're gonna recorrect by 20, 28%. And you look at housing prices, it is overpriced by about 25 to 28%. Yeah. And so it's gonna, it has to correct at some point. Yeah, John. Yeah, I think that's a good point because they lie about things that are significantly less embarrassing to their administration than the state of the economy. So I don't think that we can expect them to necessarily be honest with like the, uh, these particular finger or figures. But even then, it's like they're so out of touch with what the average American actually has to experience. It really doesn't represent anything to them except like a number on paper. Like they don't mm -hmm. translate that to the price of groceries or the price no. of like the, the electric bill or things 
things like mm -hmm. that. And it's even forcing, I think, a lot of people who just own small businesses who are more or less apolitical to really pay attention to what's actually happening. Like I saw a tweet that was going viral uh, from a business owner, I think owns like a coffee shop or a, some sort of pastry shop. And they were like, my electric bill's up three times. Like, this is unsustainable. This is ridiculous. And it's interesting because the biggest replies to those are saying things like, oh, maybe you should like uh, make your business a co-op or maybe you should pay your workers more to help them. So it was immediately like not the business owner who controls everything, but like, well, how are you treating your workers? <laughs> and it, it's really like this, this very leftist sentiment of just like hating business owners and just like being in this perpetual state of like always supporting unions and workers mm -hmm. and things like that. So the people who make all of that possible are being thrown under the bus because of this like abstract fixation on like the workers, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, so Peter Ducey explained earlier on this great clip on Fox News, which by the way, I'm going to try to like be able to form coherent sentences. I've been up since like 2.30 a.m. because my baby doesn't sleep. So I, there, my brain is, I feel like Joe Biden, my brain keeps short circuiting. Um, he was explaining on Fox News while he was at the White House how the administration is trying to spin this. They, they did this event, the Inflation Reduction Act, you know, the signing of it, and they were doing this big celebration. Uh, and they, they, it's, it's hard to imagine the administration right now, as you guys were both talking about how bad things are, planning a celebration for the Inflation Reduction Act, which, by the way, they haven't addressed how it's going to actually reduce the inflation. Oh, but they will transform the, uh, the, the, all of the green energy uh, and transition over to that watch. Something else officials around here do a lot is they brag about gas prices coming down. And they have, but not enough to offset increases in the last month in food and rent. So now the president is saying today's data shows more progress in bringing global inflation down in the U.S. economy. Overall, prices have essentially uh, have been essentially flat in our country these last two months. That is welcome news for American families with more st work still to do. About four hours from right now, there is something on the president's schedule that is described as an event celebrating the passage of H.R. 5376, the Inflation Reduction Act. So they are going to be celebrating inflation reduction just a few hours after the president himself said inflation flat. Mm, that is so exciting. Uh, the celebration uh, began about like 20 minutes prior to this mm -hmm. taping, actually. And uh, James Taylor was performing Fire and Rain. It was just a wonderful event. But I guess maybe even the, the attendees were not sold on this being a big deal because uh, Nancy Pelosi was also there and had to, she had a Jeb Bush moment and had to tell the audience to clap. Watch. Mr. President, thank you for <laughs> unifying and inspiring a vision of a stronger, fairer, safer future for all, for our children. Your extraordinary leadership has made this glorious day possible. I, that's an applause line. <laughs> for the children. It's for the children. It's always for the children. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what they're doing for the children. They're causing the children in this country to fall away in a level where we may not recover them, whether it's raping their minds or physically abusing children. They are, this is the worst administration in history for the children. Um, but the interesting thing is they are celebrating things. You know, to Peter Ducey's point there, you know, and, and I'm so happy that we at least have one person at the White House that wants to tell the truth. Um, the, to, in John's point, they do not care. They will sell you whatever they want to sell you, and they fully believe in and expect the American people to just eat it up and drink it. Just pay attention to your own budget. Just pay attention to your own budget. Don't even worry about the White House or the Dow Jones. Just what is happening in your home. And, and, and so, Sarah, when you create a problem, okay, and then you I walk... I don't create problems. No. Joe Biden. <laughs> okay. Anybody. Yeah. Joe Biden creates a problem and he walks half the problem back. Should we celebrate that? Right. 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 Hey, right. hey, we created jobs. Yeah, you shut it all down through yeah. COVID. That's not a job creation program. The, the gas prices, too, they've done that with. Exactly. Yeah. So now they're celebrating how great they are. And I go, dude, you've only recovered maybe a quarter of the damage you created. We're not celebrating that. Mm -hmm. We're not gaining here. Get back to Trump's numbers and improve on it, and then we start celebrating. Mm -hmm. The reason they're not clapping is there's nothing to clap for. <laughs>
No, not not clapping for Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi being there isn't enough. You have this like weird beef with Nancy Pelosi. No, like, it's true. I, I it's don't a like good one. her, but you've always had this. this... She's just. A, it's just that she is witch. evil. Yeah, she is just legitimately a demon. Oh, okay, I'm right there with you. Um, I think that there's an unusual bracket in this country where we've never been more liberal as a country before, both in terms of policy and like our attitudes. We've also never been more dissatisfied with the country, but it's also not for the reasons that are more obvious. Like people who are on the left hate this country, but it's not because of all the things that we talk about that are like affecting people who are even, you know, independent or impartial to the whole thing. They just want to be able to provide for their families. They're like hating this country because of like whatever is left of its history and heritage and of like white men occupying the halls of Congress and things like that. And so there's this weird paradigm that exists where they want to keep eternally doubling down on everything that's led to this point while there's still alarm bells like going off in their head that says that this trajectory is wrong, what's going on in the country is wrong, or even the polling that's done about how dissatisfied Americans are with the Biden administration. If you ask them then in follow up, well, who would you prefer control Congress? It's still Democrats. And mm. so there's mm. got to be some point where finally they realize that like this system isn't working, at which point there can be real change. But right now we're just still, you know, following along in that, uh, that hand cart to help. But John, you have to attribute the carnage and the problem to somebody. And it has to be attributed to them. And that's, that's the gap that I've seen in America for so long. They get away with it because they're not held to account. No one goes, no, it's that guy's fault. He's the leader. He, now, we can say Obama's pulling his strings and Rice and, and whoever else, Soros. But it's them. So uh, account the pain you're feeling in your home today to them. Allocate it. They caused it. They are the ones. They are the ones that's abandoning your child in the classroom. They're the ones that's literally robbing this country blind. Make them account for it. And that's the message that has to go down on the grassroots level so that people then go, they are to blame. I cannot go back there because if there's a separation of, well, Demo the Democratic Party is for me, but sure, this leader is maybe not that good. No, they're one and the same. Yeah. Um, I, so Joe Biden uh, um, he, as vice president, I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was back in 2016, uh, he, launched, he launched the Cancer Moonshot Initiative. He's always, he's always been like, I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna cure cancer. I single-handedly will cure cancer. Um, so this was designed to accelerate the rate of progress against cancer. And back in February, he reignited this uh, initiative with the goal of reducing the death rate from cancer by at least 50% over the next 25 years, probably because, I mean, you guys heard in that speech a while back, he said he had cancer. He said he and a lot of his friends from like the oil slicks on the windshields or whatever, and they had cancer. So maybe that's that's why he reignited this initiative. But um, he also suggested that mRNA vaccines will be used in the future mm. to stop cancer cells from multiplying, which is mm, they don't want to get kicked off YouTube. So I won't say that. But I'll just say people like Dr. Ryan Cole, who studied these things, um, actually believe the opposite is happening with the mRNA vaccines. Mm -hmm. And it's actually stopping your body from being able to protect yourself against things like cancer cells multiplying. But hey, I'm just a stupid TV host. What do I know? Let's listen to uh, Joe Biden. But for each for each of the ways we know cancer today, we know we can change the trajectory. For example, to prevent cancers, scientists are exploring whether mRNA vaccine technology that brought us safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines could be used to stop cancer cells when they first arise. You know, I thought to myself as we uh, went over the story of the Biden administration finally saying this next vaccine that they have coming out is the last time that we are going to take your money as taxpayers and use it to pay uh, pharmaceutical companies off. And then I was like, oh, I see. That's just going to be the next one in a long line of taxpayer funded, uh, you know, va vaccines that uh, we will continue to line big pharma's pockets on. Sarah, for the mRNA program, that exists. This is how you would extend it and still obtain your initiative and mm -hmm. your objective. Mm -hmm. They have not moved their eyes off of the objective. Inherently, these people believe that we are overpopulated. Inherently, they contribute to a lower birth rate. 
They support people like Planned Parenthood. They want to abort just about every baby in the womb. They want same-sex relationships so you cannot reproduce. They are still on point. Now they're going to take the same vaccine that may or may not have caused a little bit of damage through COVID. And now they're going to convince you that this is how you cure cancer. So now they're going to go to a cancer population that's already very vulnerable. And they're going, this almost feels like AZT again by Fauci. This almost feels like, no, because it is. Mm -hmm. Because they've been on this track since 1945. This is where they are. You know, Musk, Elon Musk was asked the other day by some crazy guys, like, what, what do you think is the biggest threat to America? And he said, um, the low birth rate. That's the biggest threat to America. We are yeah. losing our country. We're losing our population. So I hope we're still on YouTube. But <laughs> those are my thoughts about this fantastic new idea. It's not a new idea. They're still on point. John? I think uh, what's more interesting than the cancer discussion is the cancer prevention discussion. And, like, if you look throughout history, this, like, cancer phenomenon is very new in terms of the cultural, I guess, uh, portion of the pie chart that, that it occupies. And if you look at, like, our diets, I mean, the things that are sprayed mm -hmm. on our foods, like, mm -hmm. cancer is fundamentally caused by inflammation in the cells, which is because of our diets. We're eating these, like, highly processed foods. Even when we buy foods that, we, you know, the FDA says are organic, they're being sprayed with, like, literal poisons, and your body is, like, mutating in this almost alien way. And then, not uh, coincidentally, people are getting cancer and so there's you know the kind of like approved theory that can still be said on Twitter and on Facebook and YouTube which is like oh big pharma is big pharma man you know they're like making money off hiding the cure it's like this total hippie thing maybe that's true but it's like if you actually eat real foods and you know don't live this totally dystopian 21st century lifestyle your chances of developing cancer even if you're predisposed to it genetically are just gonna tank and so there's so much money that's made in that in itself mm -hmm. which is why that's never talked about maybe you'll get the big pharma discussion because there's even more money made there so mm -hmm. it's like you know at some point they're going to have to address it a little bit mm -hmm. but really it's like it, it is totally avoidable uh for the most part yeah but then they couldn't profit off of it if exactly. they told you to just change your diet so um mm -hmm. i want to play i know we got to go but i i would be remiss if i didn't play uh joe biden's really funny joke to a bunch of uh cancer survivors to uh not jump from the balcony at the speech watch oh and i want to thank all of you the cancer patients, survivors, caregivers, and don't jump from up there, okay? And all, uh... What? He's gone, ladies and gentlemen. He is, uh, the President of the United States is not with us. He has left the building a long time ago, and you cannot convince me that that is not uh, a hologram, except I guess if it was a hologram, he would be not um, so inappropriate all the time. All right, we got to take a quick break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Birch Gold. So the last time we went through a recession, there were stocks that literally went to zero. Uh, Washington Mutual, Lehman Brothers, Chrysler, uh, multiple blue chip stocks went to little or no value almost overnight. Don't let that happen to you if it happens again. Uh, historically, your best hedge against inflation is gold and silver. And uh, you've got to try Birch Gold. Um, you really need to. If you look at your 401k, don't look at your 401k every day, okay? Because if you do, you're going to be really upset because uh, it's not looking good right now. So you really need to text the folks over at Birch Gold. Let them tell you how you can convert your IRA uh, into precious metals right now. You can text the word Y to 989898. You will get a free info kit on diversifying into gold or silver. This is tax-free. OK, hedge against inflation, protect your hard earned money. Get that free info kit by texting the word Y to 989898. Uh, last Wednesday, 147 migrants arrived in Chicago from Texas. 64 of those migrants were then, then taken to a Hampton Inn Hotel in Burr Ridge, which is outside of Chicago, where they will be for at least the next 27 days. And now the mayor of Burr Ridge is very upset, Gary Grasso, who said it's hypocritical for Lori Lightfoot to be complaining about Greg Abbott uh, sending migrants, illegal immigrants to Chicago and then sending them out to the suburbs of Chicago. <laughs> I just mm -hmm. love this so much. They just keep passing the buck while still saying that they are going to be a sanctuary city. I mean, they're saying we will be a sanctuary city. Don't worry. We'll c just come here. 
We will take care of you. We will be a sanctuary city. We'll protect you from those mean Republicans who don't want you here because of the color of your skin. And now they're like, oh, yeah, you're taking us up on that? That's a problem. We don't actually want you. So, um, And by the way, Lori Lightfoot is not the only one. The Democrat city of El Paso, Texas, is also uh, busing migrants to New York City. Uh, by the way, I did say the Democrat city of El Paso is busing migrants to New York City uh, to make it Eric Adams' problem, I guess. Let's watch a little bit of this clip. Take a, a look at this video out of El Paso in West Texas. They are getting overrun there. What you're looking at are street releases of migrants. Border Patrol so overwhelmed, they are so over capacity, and the local NGOs are over capacity that Border Patrol has just started dropping off migrants on city streets, street corners. Migrants are having to sleep on sidewalks in front of bus stops. The city is totally overwhelmed right now. As a result of all this, take a look. The city of El Paso now sending its own buses full of migrants to New York City. This is video of one of those buses arriving in the Big Apple. Remember, El Paso is a Democrat-led city, and they are saying they are so overwhelmed, they too are now having to bus migrants all the way to New York City. Oh, poor New York. They, they, what, are they, what are they up to? 9,000 last time Eric Adams whined about it? Was that them or was that uh, Kathy Hochul? I can't remember, but um, that's really sad for them. I can't imagine what 9,000 um, extra people would do to your, you know, to drain your resources. I can't, 9,000, wow, that's a lot. No, but you were shining your light, say, come, we're sa also a sanctuary city, yeah. we're going to take care of you. We take care of the homeless on the street, not. We <laughs> take care of the mentally ill, we elect them. We, <laughs> I mean, you know, this is, no, but, but uh, 9,000, try 2.9 million. Drop in the bucket. Try 2.9 million in Texas. Try, try and come and see, you know, 5,000 boys under the age of 18 just in our convention center in Dallas, mm -hmm. for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. So, no, this is, I say send a million. Just send them. I mean, them. I say send them back across the, no, of the course, border. No, of course, of course. But you need, you need a little chutzpah to get that done. And so we don't quite have, we haven't matured to that level yet. Yeah, I sure wish they, I mean, I'm like, do it. Can you imagine what would happen do if it. like a caravan from India tried to trek their way to China? Can you imagine how China and the CCP would react? Probably in a serious manner. They'd probably recognize it to be an invasion and they probably wouldn't entertain that. And certainly not do the political theater of like, oh, left sends them to right and then right sends them like ping pong, mm -hmm. ping pong. Meanwhile, they're like, you know, wreaking havoc in the communities and things like that. What we should do if we were serious is militarize the southern border, declare it to be some sort of military zone where the media is not allowed so that they can't, you know, oh, look at their whipping people, which of course wasn't even what was going on. And uh, yeah, I literally cannot think of an argument, even, you know, playing down devil's advocate why there should not be a militarized southern border. And we're not animal. We're not like barbaric. We'll have signs that say we're going to shoot you, blah, blah, blah. But there should literally, I'm not kidding. There should be nests with guys with machine guns. Just like if you're going to try to come in this country, you will be shot. Because these people are frankly only going to respond to force. They're not going to respond to please don't come. Please, hey, you better come back for your court date. They don't care. Right. They're here to take advantage of our country and our stupid leadership and they should be shot. Which, yeah. by the way, I mean, if you want to play the, the compassionate route, because that's what we hear all the time is that this you're not compassionate. Well, you know who I'm compassionate for? My children and my children's children. And um, according to the latest report from uh, the Federation of American Immigration Reform, they're saying that all of the, the estimated 1.3 million immigrants who have been released in the, into the United States by immigration officials just from uh, since Joe Biden has, has entered office is going to ta cost the U.S. taxpayer uh, 20 plus billion dollars a year. So... I don't know. I don't really feel like it's compassionate to make all of us pay for someone who's illegally entering our country, therefore doesn't respect our law in the first place. Um, and by the way, yeah, I am Hispanic, so you can't call me racist. I mean, and will anyway. I am a good friend of hers, and so <laughs> by extension, via the transit of property, you also cannot call me racist. No, I mean, but it's stupid. I don't care what color you are. You, borders are borders for a reason. It's true. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I've never really bought into the compassion argument because my, my home is not an economic zone. Yeah. Like, oh, this homeless guy would be better off in your house. You have plenty of room. I don't care. Like, this is my home. This is my country. If you want a better life, maybe start by respecting the process. Right. But frankly, even I'm not even in love with that. We possess in America a certain spirit of optimism. You know, we invented like the happy ending. If you look at stories and, uh, you know, movies in other countries, it was always more oblique. No, seriously, we are a country defined by optimism. Mm -hmm. If this country sucks, we try to make it 
better. We don't go flee somewhere else. When this country sucks, by the way, largely because of the people who are mass immigrating from the third world, this is me trying to make it better. If your country sucks, make it better. Don't go flee somebody, because where are people going to go when this country's gone? Yeah. Well, right, because they all come over here and then we have the same problems yeah, that but, but, existed but John, there. But John, the people will not come if they're not invited to come. Yeah. They will not come if they're not coerced, and the word is coerced, by people like you know, some of the NGOs that are funded by our government in Guatemala, Honduras, say they won't come at these numbers if they were not told you are going to be welcomed. If they're not told that, hey, when you go, because the message flows back. When you go, hey, you're going to get a $1,300 check. Hey, you're going to get a shower. They're going to ship you into a U.S. city. They're going to take care of you. The, the, the humanitarian conversation that you need to be had is what you just saw on the screen. That's inhumane. Yeah. To them, to coerce them to come from a foreign country, to leave their home, for mothers to sell their children to cartel members, to come sit on a Texas sidewalk in 100 degrees heat, that is inhumane. The inhumanity starts with the President of the United States by signaling to the world that if you come, we can take care of you. We can't even take care of our own. Mm. Hello, yeah. San Francisco yeah. sidewalk and Los Angeles sidewalk. So it starts with the administration. That's yeah. where the in inhumanity starts. Uh, speaking of the administration and the inhumanity, uh, also epic levels of gaslighting as Karine Jean-Pierre, White House press secretary, went on today and tried to insist that um, they're doing more than Trump to secure the border, and it's a repu those darn Republicans who are actually obstructing what they want to do to secure the border. Watch. Administration, which largely just tried to build a wall, an ineffective wall, uh, along the border and couldn't even finish that in four years, uh, were certainly uh, doing a lot more to secure the border and could be doing even more if Republicans would stop their obstruction. Yeah. Liar. It makes you want your head liar. to uh, explode. By the way, yes, she's a liar, and I don't understand how she sleeps at night because it's absolutely evil. But also notice she is so horrible at her job. She's just literally reading every word. Yeah. Well, she's, she's just always, reading every word. I mean, she's always reading every word. I'm like, You're a parrot. I heard what she said. I'm like, you tell me that talking point. I know it's a lie, but if I'm a horrible person, I have no problem saying it anyway, but I don't need to, to read it. Like, it's very clear if that's what your strategy is. She's so bad at it, uh, she has to read every word. I don't understand how these people sleep at night. Um, all right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be back with more. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. So uh, if you want to know what uh, the left's real plan is for your kids, just look at the reaction to the work Patriot Mobile did in multiple school districts here in Texas. Yeah. The left is losing their minds. Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative mobile phone provider, and they've just been truly a force for conservative values. This is because they're taking a portion of your bill and funding conservative causes and candidates, by the way, at local levels, especially who believe in the sanctity of life, freedom of speech, the Second Amendment, and they are winning, which, again, is why the left is so mad. Sarah, may I? I'm yes, sorry. Please. I'm sorry to rudely please. interrupt you, but may I? Sorry, Stephen. Patriot Mobile physically stood in the Rio Grande with us, physically went down, physically funded the operation to help rescue children, physically funded the operation to secure private property mm -hmm. against illegal immigration. Let me be the first to tell you, yeah. they've walked with our organization, yeah. they actually physically do more yeah. than Christine Jean-Pierre Right. And the president of the United States, Patriot Mobile and Glenn Story and his team by themselves. Sorry for the interruption. Yes. No, I mean, uh, truly, they are. These are the, the people that you want to partner with. So if you want to make sure that your dollars are going to a company that believes and shares your values, you can go to PatriotMobile.com slash news. You can get free activation with the offer code news. That is PatriotMobile.com slash news. Last month, the California Air Resources Board issued new rules requiring 35% of new vehicles to produce zero emissions by 2026. This is a standard that is uh, set to progressively rise to 100% by 2035. And Pete Buttigieg, Secretary of, uh, what is it, Transportation, expressed interest in California's policy nationwide and argued that a rapid transition to electric cars is, of course, required to combat, yes, climate change. Let's, uh, let's listen to Pete Buttigieg. 
Well, it's interesting to see how the states are trying to go above and beyond what we're doing at the federal level. And uh, I'm, I'm really interested to follow these developments while we continue to set a national policy that's the baseline for all of this. We need to move in the direction of electric vehicles. And look, industry's already there. At least one major automaker says they're not even planning to make uh, gas cars past 2035. But we've got to make sure that this happens quickly enough to help us beat climate change. We've got to make sure it happens affordably enough that it's not just wealthy people, uh, but uh, uh, low-income people who are the ones who know, most need those gas savings if they can afford the EVs in the first place. And we need to make sure that this is a made-in-America EV revolution. He's so little, I feel like I, I could just pick him up and put him in my pocket. I was about to say, what a bad camera angle. Yeah, he's like a little pocket. <laughs> A little, pocket little, Pete. It's like a little pocket puppet. <laughs> uh, the Biden administration has, I'm so tired, I think I'm delirious. The Biden administration has established the goal of procuring only 100% zero emission light duty vehicles by 2027 and will extend the same standard to all vehicles in the federal government's fleet by 2035. Sarah, it's very, very likely that the power lines he's standing under, um, the energy that runs through those cables are produced by fossil fuels. Um, and the, and the little thingamajiggy you plug into your car, oh, where does that power come from? That's right, Oops. also from fossil fuels. Oops. So uh, we got a bit of a dilemma here. <laughs> Oops. But it's a little bit of a disconnect. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, just power. It comes from the cable. Like a chicken comes from the store. Duh. Well, also, they've already been having problems with, uh, with their grid and not being able, you know, they're already like, don't charge your car when it needs charging if it's between these hours. No, Imagine Newsom. the disaster if everyone has them. I think you covered, we covered it two days ago. Newsom is firing up power plants mm -hmm. with fossil fuels mm -hmm. to do what? Uh, to charge <laughs> the EVs. It's, so it's a brilliant stupid. idea. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's, uh, it's about almost as good as the marketing brilliance but scam of organic in this country. Yeah, it's so stupid. And, and I mean, you're right, because the average American has no idea. They're like, ooh, electric, good for climate, yay, we need. Mm. Yeah, I think the only like non-fossil fuel source of energy that on the net saves fossil fuels is nuclear. Mm -hmm. but they and don't, they never want to talk about that. They never talk about yeah. that. Like everything else, it, it's not even like you really have to get into the, the rigmarole with it. You can just kind of see on paper very plainly, this is costing more fossil fuels, which you claim are so bad, than it's saving. Or even like, you know, the cow farts are causing the temperature to go up, so we have to all eat like trans meat now. It's just the most ridiculous thing. And most insultingly, it's not cool. The new Mustang that's like electric, it's oh. like, it's not not cool. No, that's Dodge not is car. retiring the Charger and the Challenger, I've heard. Mm -hmm. It's like, it sucks. Mm -hmm. It's just gay. It really is just like gay and it's retarded. And that, by the way, I think is why you're not allowed to say those two words. Because if you look at like the average guy who just wants to like go fill up his like, you know, 14 mile to the gallon truck with gas. And now he's seeing all these advertisements about, I think it's because the easiest way for that American man to describe this country would be like, oh, that's freaking gay and retarded. Isn't that gay as hell? And so now those words are like so stigmatized. You can't say that because because it is the most accessible critique of the way our country exists right now, and I'm offended by it on behalf of that blue collar man. So I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna use that as a segue into my next story, on. which was actually uh, the GOP establishment. <laughs> More than 400 current and former establishment GOP officials have signed a letter calling on U.S. lawmakers to enshrine the same-sex marriage bill working its way through the Senate into law. This is, uh, this is efforted mostly by uh, Ken Melman, former Republican National Committee chairman and Bush re-election campaign manager. <laughs> so making a whole lot of sense now that you hear that. Uh, the letter states that passing the Respect for Marriage Act would, quote, remove any uncertainty for the more than one million Americans who are building families, taking on the responsibilities and commitment associated with marriage and caring for the one they love. I have a feeling I know where you're going to take this, Yaku, but I would just like to say very plainly, I don't, like, the federal government should not have any business mm -hmm. in marriage in the first place. And I just wish that anyone who calls themselves a Republican, which I guess means nothing anymore, it certainly doesn't mean conservative, there you go. There you go. would understand that that is, I mean, you, that's all you have to say. Let them call you whatever the hell names they're going to call you because they were already going to call you those names in mm -hmm. the first place. Don't give the federal government rights that they don't already have. Don't give them power that they don't already have. It's like, it's that simple. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But now we have fallen into this vortex of 
people with an R behind their name, which absolutely means nothing anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, that actually means proof and verify, okay? Because they're cowards, they are gonna stab you in the back. R does not mean conservative, and it definitely does not mean a conservative individual that will uphold Jew Judeo-Christian values. But the issue about gay marriage, there's gay marriage. So now you gotta ask yourself, why does someone in the Republican Party have to enshrine this mm -hmm. and give the federal government power? And it's not even about the gay marriage thing. I don't wanna give the federal government anything I don't want to give them any control. I want I to shrink. I thought it was BS that when I went to go get married, I had to pay exactly. for a marriage license. Why? Exactly. Why? Why? Taxing your marriage yeah. right, to the federal government. I want to shrink the federal the government to a point where you can hardly find them or mm -hmm. see them mm -hmm. and pass it back down to the states. But there is gay marriage. And then again, even before gay marriage, there's equal rights in the Constitution of the United States way back when. All men equal. Mm -hmm. All men equal. So again, the things they fight for, they already have. It's a power grab, but now we have people in our own party aiding and abetting yeah. the power grab. And, yeah. and so be really careful who you trust with an R behind their name. All right, I'm a little uh, nervous to go to you, John, but I'll give you a quick word here. I would just say I think it's sort of a prisoner's dilemma. I mean, you know, the side that wants to win is always going to beat the side that wants to be left alone. And so that argument That's has been true. very popular. Um, and I, I used to believe that. But it's like these people are always going to want to uh, codify into federal law that which is disordered. So it's not enough, in my opinion, to just say, well, marriage and the government shouldn't even be involved. It's like, well, they're going to do it anyway. So we may as well, if we have the ball in our court, uh, make it how it should be, which is natural, have our law reflect God's law. Otherwise, it's like, how can we expect to survive? as a nation and uh, go from there because it's completely disordered. It's not real marriage. It's not a real family. And uh, anyone who says otherwise is just frankly trying to be nice. You know, no one actually looks at these photographs of gay couples with children and says like, oh, this is like normal. I mean, they're doing that because they want to be nice, but it's not actually a real family and everybody knows it. So let me, let me ask you guys this. Um, the Senate Democrats need, I think, 10, 10 GOP votes, right, mm -hmm. to, to go over the 60-vote the filibuster uh, threshold. They have three Senate Republicans so far, uh, all, all who you'd expect, Collins, Portman, and Tillis, who have said they would likely vote yes. Nine have said that they are potential backers. backers. One word answer, yes or no, do you think that, that they, get the, they get the 10 GOP votes to get themselves over the, the threshold? Not this time but next time possibly. Okay. I agree with that. Okay, all right, uh, we gotta take a quick break. We'll be back. In his September 1st speech from hell, and I, yes, I literally mean from the depths of hell, mm -hmm. Joe Biden said, if you remember, Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. So according to uh, Rasmussen, 80% of Democrats agree with that quote, 62% strongly agree, 48% of likely U.S. voters agree with that quote, including 36% who strongly agree, and 47% disagree with Joe Biden's slam on what he called MAGA Republicans, uh, including 39% who strongly disagree. But I just, you know, you want to believe that there are just regular, logical, sane, mm -hmm. rational Democrats that still exist, and then you hear that 80% of Democrats agree with that, and you're like, nope, I feel like they're all, no, they're all gone. No, they're all, they're sheep, and they're, they're, they're walking off the cliff. If they haven't gone off the cliff yet, they're soon to go off the cliff. Yeah. But this is truly where I want to break, a, not break away, but, but, but they want to brand everybody under one blanket. So you're MAGA. And it's not even if you've ever said the word MAGA or you just if you're Trump and you like what he did, you're MAGA. And, and that's not if you're good. a Republican, you're MAGA. Exactly. And that's not good for us yeah. as, a, as a group either, because, you know, it's like, no, I'm not in a Trump's not my God. I follow my savior and from his word, the constitution was written. I'm going to defend this constitution as an immigrant and I'm going to fight like heck against all things evil. But they go, no, no, we got to pull you together because it's a, it's a solidified single attack where if you go, no, forget about it. It's not even about MAGA. Mm -hmm. It's not about the phrase. It's about what you guys are doing to our country and it's mm -hmm. what you're doing to our children. And it's about all these 9,000 different issues that we're just standing for. It's not about just this one slogan and movement. Mm -hmm. We didn't buy into a movement. 
We bought into a country yeah. with laws and systems and founding fathers, and we're defending a country, not a movement. So uh, I'm trying to find the tweet, but over the weekend, I believe it was, so September 11th was what, Sunday? I believe it was the day before, so September 10th um, on Saturday. Here it is. Joe Biden tweeted out, MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards to an America where there is no right to choose, no right to privacy, no right to contraception, no right to marry who you love. Um, but together we can choose a different path forward. I found it very interesting that he used the term mm -hmm. MAGA forces. Right. It, it's they've they, as as always they it's a slow incremental uh, you know progressive change to get to their end goal. So it's mm -hmm. been you know Trump and then it's MAGA and now it's MAGA Republicans and then it's MAGA extremists and then and now all of a sudden we're at MAGA forces, which makes it sound a whole lot like this is a a war yeah. against one another when you use that language. Am yeah. I am I off base? Mm -mm. Uh, I think it's just a war against the coalition that Donald Trump represents because they know and they laugh about this behind closed doors, leftist leadership. I mean, they know that Republican voters and, you know, our people are like the most cowardly people probably in the history of the world. And so all they have to do is apply a little bit of pressure and we immediately cave. And so by labeling everybody who votes for Republicans, you know, as domestic terrorists, MAGA Republicans, mm -hmm. now you see people going on Fox News where Trump is banned from saying, well, no, we he's calling anybody who disagrees with him politically, you know, a Threats to democracy, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't actually believe that people like, you know, the rhinos in Congress are threats to democracy. So what he's trying to do is give Republicans an opportunity to do what they do best, which is throw their best people under the bus and say, no, I'm not like him. I'm not a MAGA guy. And then what? It goes back to politics as usual, which is why we're here on the back foot of issues like gender identity, on the back foot of issues like we just talked about with Republican senators flirting with the idea of, you know, enshrining same-sex marriage as, you know, law under, under the country where it couldn't be overturned by Roe v. Wade. Whereas in 2012, Barack Obama couldn't even run as an, uh, a proponent of same-sex mm -hmm. marriage. I mean, he was the most far-left candidate in the country's history at that time. And even he, as recently as 10 years ago, had to say, no, that's too far left for me. So it just goes to show how accelerated everything has become in the last decade. Yeah, yeah. I, I, they call us all extremists. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just so funny. For I was in the normal. I know, I know, no, I, I know. That, so that was gonna be my point, was like, I'm, I've been, there's a bunch of articles that were written about me recently with all the, the drag show that we got shut down in Denton. And um, it's just so funny because I'll send it to someone, like the Dallas Observer wrote one, and, and I'll send it to, to someone, and they're like, oh, I, are they, are they, how do they lean? And I'm like, they called me a right-wing media figure, and they talked about Don Huffines and said, former far-right gubernatorial candidate. I think we all know which way they lean, because that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, all right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be back. It's just, it really is fascinating. Right-wing media. Last night, performer Lizzo won an Emmy for her show, Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls. When accepting the award, Lizzo said that when she was younger, all she wanted was to see someone in media who was fat like her, because I guess she just wants health problems for everyone, watch. When I was a little girl, all I wanted to see was me in the media. Someone fat like me, black like me, beautiful like me. <laughs> <laughs> if I could go back and tell little Lizzo something, I'd be like, you gonna see that person, but b is gonna have to be you. <laughs> um, wow. Where are my big girls? Are they here? Come! Why? Come! Why? 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 Why are we celebrating uh, obesity? Why? Why are we celebrating being black? Why? Feels a little bit racist to me. What a narcissist. You think you're the only first big black girl How about to Oprah? win an award? Well, what about o o Oprah? I mean, has been around a, it's, forever. It's, it's, it's absolute garbage. <sighs> right, John, do I even want to? Do I, do I even want to? Probably not. I'll regret it. Go ahead. I, was just, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, this country doesn't, you know, we used to have models in the 1990s who were like, you know, skinny white people in bikinis and then everything changed and now we have like fat black women celebrating obesity. It's like a total little inversion. Well, and people will go like, well, but being too skinny, it's being too thin is not healthy either. It's like, really? yes, And what's correct. your alternative? Right. Agree. right, right. It's like, okay, we great. Agree. That doesn't mean that you have to be 500 pounds and celebrating it, acting like there's nothing wrong and everyone should just accept it. Like, but she's also the first one. She's the first one. It's all it's up just to her. her. It's just, just her. her. Yeah. She broke the mold. Yeah, yeah.
That's a great point. Narcissists, all of them. All right, gentlemen, thank you for being here. Make sure that you check out uh, both of their social medias, follow them everywhere, and subscribe, and we will see you guys tomorrow.